Before we start, this video is sponsored by Moon Milk, which is a healthy spice mix that I created with my family. It helps you relax, focus and sleep better. Check the links in the description. So how many themes is enough for a qualitative study? How many themes is the, is the correct number that we may expect to have in our findings? This is a question that you often ask me and uh, as often is the case with my answers to your questions about research and especially data analysis, the answer is kind of vague. Uh, namely, it depends. It will depend on several factors and in this video I'll do my best to explain how many themes is a good number uh, using my own experience, using experience of others, as well as some useful references. So first to give you the answer based on my own experience. I, uh, I work as a data analyst, so at any given time I usually work on at least two different studies. Uh, this makes uh, at least four studies each month that I'm working on. This uh, makes for a, uh, for a nice sample of studies that I can uh, choose from and I can use to draw some kind of an average. So, so from practice, from my own experience, I would say that I'm usually likely to generate any anywhere between two and maybe eight to 10 themes in, in a report in, in the findings for qualitative study. Now, if I were to narrow this down even further and really think of an average of the most likely number of themes that I'm uh, that I usually generate, I would probably say this is somewhere between, uh, let's say, three and six themes for a study, which is also in line with what Brown and Clark say when they explain their average number of themes, which uh, they explain to be between two and six themes for a 10,000 word uh, report or journal article. As they explain when they justify this number, uh, it would be difficult to discuss uh, a larger number of themes with a sufficient detail. So to really exhaust this discussion and provide an in-depth discussion of, uh, of a study that has more themes than this number for this kind of a report. Although uh, this is a good reasoning and it's a good re uh, explanation, I would like you to be careful with that and just not to misinterpret what they are saying. So I would not recommend using, for example, the, the kind of publication you're working on as kind of a criterion for how many themes you'll have in your data. So that's definitely not what they meant because you may have a large study, you may have more themes, but then only pick some of them, for example, for a specific publication that you're working on. So, so don't use that uh, as your main criterion. So what should be that main criterion? Uh, as you've probably heard me say many times in, in many of my videos when I talk about data analysis, when we report uh, our qualitative results, what we're doing is essentially uh, telling a story of our data, telling a story of our data. Uh, every person has their own way of, of telling that story. And although uh, two different people, two different researchers working, for example, on similar or the same data set, uh, are likely to choose a slightly different way of telling that story, of course, it will still be based on the data. So there will be similarities. Although, like I said, in practice, uh, how they tell that story which essentially means what kind of themes they will use to tell that story, what kind of building blocks, which are our themes they will use to convey that message, to tell that story. This will depend. This will depend on individual uh, quality researchers, reporters' preferences. Before we continue, I wanted to remind you that I offer one-to-one -one tutorials. If you're stuck with your data analysis, you want to discuss your data analysis, show me your themes or show me your codes and perhaps discuss uh, ways uh, to take your analysis forward, uh, as well as address any other aspects of qualitative research planning and implementation, have a look at the services that I offer and feel free to reach out to book a session. So now back to our story. We are telling a story of our data. It's not very likely, for example, to really tell that story with one theme. I can imagine some studies, some really small scale studies, maybe very specific, not necessarily academic in the academic context, maybe in the industry, in a given company or something. I can imagine there being a study with perhaps one theme. So uh, so it's not like it's absolutely impossible. However, I would say that in, in most situations, one theme may simply not be enough to really exhaust that data and tell that story. On the other hand, you have extremes, you may have 20 or 30 different themes. And I do see that a lot uh, with the people, with the students I work with. They have uh, lots of themes. They have a lot of in-depth data. That's a very common stage, uh, this kind of researcher block where, uh, that they experience. So they have a lot of data. They generated so many different themes and they simply don't know 
how to reduce this and, and how to tell that story, which themes to keep, which themes to delete. So that's so these are two different extremes. But uh, to demonstrate uh, how different uh, it may be, how the, how the process may differ between the different researchers, imagine that we are working on a study in which we are uh, thinking of uh, making recommendations for social workers. So let's say we're, uh, there is a study, it's based in a, a specific context, uh, about social workers, perhaps social workers that work with some minority minority groups, so migrants or, or maybe other ethnic minorities. Uh, the goal, our goal, our research question, everything is oriented towards making recommendations for practice. We want to improve their practice, we want to, uh, them to be as effective as possible, obviously to help as many people as possible. And now uh, they are telling me about the different things uh, that they, they recommend, they suggest doing. So for example, somebody tells me that uh, those social workers who are more trained, they, they generally do better. Those who lack this training, they struggle, so we definitely should think about uh, more training for social workers. Somebody else uh, maybe told me that uh, that many more staff members are needed because they simply are simply overwhelmed with work. So, uh, so there is a need for more staff members. And yet another participant tells me about uh, cultural awareness, linguistic awareness, training into different and understanding different cultures. Because again, we're working; they are working with certain minorities. So, so they tell me about maybe they need to understand some some cultures a little bit better. So now, how I tell this story will entirely depend on my preference. Of course, like I said, there is certain data I have to stick to, I have at my disposal, uh, uh, but how exactly I tell this story will depend on how I choose to tell that story. We are, uh, of course, um, the goal of our study is to make recommendations. So the most obvious choice is to create themes uh, or themes such as suggestions for improving practice. And this sounds like a good theme. So, so one of these suggestions, so the th sub themes we are listing uh, are uh, more staff, maybe more training for staff, uh, cultural awareness training, and, and all these things that, that essentially were recommended by my participant. But another scenario that is possible is that I'm looking at these quotes and these extracts and I'm noticing that they are talking about certain struggles, they are talking about certain factors that help them overcome these struggles or maybe some good practices or facilitators to good practice. So I'm deciding in my study I'm going to focus on, uh, on challenges that social workers face as well as uh, facilitators, so, so factors positively influencing their practice and maybe even suggestions as well. So, I, so this time I have three themes. So challenges would be uh, lack of stuff, uh, challenges would be heavy workload, challenges would be lack of understanding of, of cultures and languages. Uh, good practices or facilitators on the other hand would be under uh, cultural awareness, uh, big enough or a high enough number of stuff, realistic workload and, and planning and scheduling. And then suggestions finally and recommendations, which is my third theme, would be similar to what I discussed before. So you can see now that from the same data, from exactly the same data, I developed two different thematic frameworks. In one of them, I was strictly focused on recommendations. Uh, on the, uh, in the other one, I decided to break it down into certain challenges that they face. Maybe I decided I want to highlight the challenges uh, rather than just talk about recommendations. So recommendations are good, but I also want to somehow maybe give justice to what they said and and to the struggles they they uh, told me about. And I decided that challenges is a big part of that story that I want to convey. Uh, ultimately, the goal is the same. By understanding challenges, by understanding good practices, we're going to create some recommendations for practice and perhaps for policy development. So in the examples that I provided, none, none of these were uh, better or worse or you know the, the correct way or the incorrect way. They were just different uh, depending on how I decided to tell that story again. What is, going to, uh, what is that story going to be? What is it going to revolve around? What building blocks and what elements? Both of them were based on the same data. Both of them would uh, achieve similar results because that's the main important thing. We always have to think of the implications of our findings. I may even add some other themes to it. So what if they define what a good practice is, for example. There is no uh, such research question in my study, but uh, this does not mean that I can't have a theme, for example, in which I 
uh, perhaps I can start my discussion with this theme or my reporting with this theme where I explain what they believed a good practice to be, if it's relevant, because maybe they believe good practice, for example, to be very personalized, and then when they talk about challenges they face, they explain that because of the heavy workload, they cannot really devote time to individual clients. So this links back to what their understanding of good practice is. So, so there are so many possibilities. The main thing is to think of the implications. Why do we need that? Uh, are these findings going to be useful? Are these findings going to answer my research question? But then how you get there uh, uh, depends to a great extent on how you want to tell that story again. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I hope that you learned something new in this video. If you did, please like it and share it to help others find it.